at me. She said, how can you tell? She said, because when you're mad at me, you swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. And when you're not mad at me, you swear by the Lord of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can tell. He's like, I know what you're doing. And subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ was lightening the mood. Even we find that one time Aisha radiallahu anha says that the Prophet ﷺ and, and got into an argument with her. They had an argument and then they decided, you know, let's bring someone to sit and talk this over. Let's bring an arbitrator. So Rasulullah ﷺ said, well, who do you suggest? So Rasulullah ﷺ said, well, what about Abu Ubaidah radiallahu anhu, al-Jarrah? Abu Ubaidah al-Jarrah? And Aisha radiallahu anha said, no, no, that's not going to work. He, he's going to favor you. So he said, well, how about your father? What more do you want than that? Your dad will be the arbitrator. Right? And we don't have men of the integrity of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq or the iman of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu alive today. So it's, that's not going to work. Don't say that that's a sunnah. Because someone actually tried to pull that one time. You know, there was a, a husband and a wife that were having a discussion. And the, the woman called me and she said, the sunnah is not to have the imam. The sunnah is to have the father of the girl come sit. But I'm like, that's insanity. Don't you make that. That is not the sunnah. Right? The sunnah is to have, find one of the family members from each side. Those, but no, it's not. Because you're not always going to have that level of integrity. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes in. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sits. Aisha radiallahu anha sits. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says to Aisha radiallahu anha, you want to go first? Aisha radiallahu anha says, no, you go first so I can make sure that you're getting all the facts straight, that you're saying everything. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu exploded at his own daughter. And Aisha radiallahu anha, how dare you talk to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that way? What's wrong with you? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has to jump in front of Aisha radiallahu anha and say to Abu Bakr, this is not what we called you for. And send Abu Bakr home and then tell Aisha radiallahu anha, you see, I saved you, I protected you. And it, it lightened up the mood. The Prophet ﷺ didn't want it to continue. And that's also something that sometimes in trying to make a point. And I ask everyone in here, who do you think was right had we actually got the full text of the hadith between the Prophet ﷺ and Aisha radiallahu anha? Who do you think would have been right? It would have definitely been the Prophet ﷺ. But he didn't want to drag it on. He could have said, no, no, don't think you're off the hook now. Let's go get Abdurrahman, your brother. Let's go get someone else. He didn't do that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khalas. He got rid of it. Just forget it happened. So the Prophet sallallahu would always jump at the first opportunity to lighten the mood. To say, you know what, just forget about it. It's over, khalas. And that's from the perfection of his character, sallallahu alayhi wa And sometimes, and subhanAllah, I didn't really understand this when I first heard it. And I'm not even going to lie. I heard this from Joel Olstein. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him to Islam. Everyone say ameen. Because that guy, if, his, if, he, if he had bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala rasulullah in the beginning, he, gives the most, he would give amazing khutbas, right? <laughs> and subhanAllah, one time I, was, I, I heard him talking about marriage and he said, that, he said that too many husbands and wives end up ending their marriage just trying to make a point. And that's ego. Just trying to make a point. I want to put my foot down. No, I'm not going to let this point go. And subhanAllah, I thought back to the Prophet ﷺ in that incident. That the Prophet ﷺ really could have made a point. Like, no, I want you to understand. See, your own father, your own father stood against you. Right? And, and let's talk about this and let's drag this on. And the Prophet ﷺ from his humility and again, and from his wisdom, alayhi salatu wasalam, did not want to let it continue. So he was silent before it happened, and he was quick to end it after it happened, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's something that's very special about him, alayhi salatu wa sallam. Now, there were times that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did express his anger with Aisha, radiallahu anha. And when did he do it? He did it twice. Twice. Or three times, actually. Three times that I can think of off the top of my head, and we have other mashayikh here. And again, who's narrating these ahadith? Aisha, radiallahu anha. So it can't be used against her. She's saying what she said. And, she, and, and it was the time when the Prophet ﷺ saw Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha radiallahu anha described Safiya radiallahu anha like this, as someone who was short. And the Prophet ﷺ, immediately, he said that you have said a word that if you were to spit it into the ocean, it would pollute it. And she didn't even say anything. She just mocked Safiya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Likewise, when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given you someone better than the ajuza, than the old woman of Quraysh, being Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up 
Who's narrating the hadith? Aisha radiallahu anha. She's saying, I was never really jealous of the other wives the way I was jealous of Khadija, and I've never even seen her before. I've never seen her before. But the Prophet loved her so much, he was so loyal to her, وسلم, that even after she passed away, giving gifts to her friends, her family, right? When he heard the voice of, of Hala, her sister, the way the Prophet وسلم, mentioned her and cared about her, and the Prophet وسلم, stood up and she said, I never saw him get that angry. And he, and he started to mention the favors of, of, of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. Amanat bi id kafara bi nas. She believed in me when no one else did, when everyone else disbelieved in me. She considered me to be truthful when no one else did, when everyone else considered me to be a liar. She spent on me when other people forbade them or, or did not spend their money on me, did not finance the da'wah. She spent. And she gave me children when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give me children through anyone else. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned her favors. What do you see is the common the common denominator between both of these incidents, or the common theme between both of these incidents, the Prophet ﷺ was standing up for someone else. Subhanallah. And then it goes back to the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. وَمَنْ تَقَمَ لِنَفْسِهِ قَتْ The Prophet ﷺ never avenged his own self. And so what ruins marriages? I want you to know this from now. Ego, more than anything else, just as ego spoils your relationship with Allah, ego spoils your relationship with your spouse, ego spoils your relationship with your parents, ego spoils your relationship with your children. The Prophet ﷺ never got angry for himself unless someone crossed the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would get angry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's incredible. So the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us humility. And by the way, this is in a situation where he knows he's right every single time because he's ma'asum, he's infallible. I don't care who you are, you are not ma'asum, you're not infallible. But the Prophet ﷺ is. The Prophet ﷺ is. And he still always opted for humility. So just as ego spoils the relationship with Allah, ego spoils the relationship with the spouse and spoils all of our worldly relationships. So when we look to the Prophet ﷺ and we see the perfection of his character, والسلام, those are examples for us. Those are examples for us. And you know, there was a statement, and I'm going to end because this was, this is the complete, this is the overtime card. Okay, I'm going to end with this. You know, I heard a family that prays together stays together. And, and subhanAllah, that's something that, that you find even from the Prophet ﷺ, that there are numerous ahadith. There's the hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, rahimahullah, imra'an qama min al-layli fasalla wa aiqada imra'ata fasallat fa in abat nadaha fi wajhi hal ma. May Allah have mercy on a man who wakes up in the middle of the night to pray and wakes up his wife to pray. And if she refuses, then he sprinkles some water in her face. No lota, no, no ibriq or whatever you call that thing. And none of those hoses that you can pull out. No, no super soakers. Sprinkles a little bit of water. A Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah used to wet his hand to remind his wife. And he would, and he would, and he would say, as-salatu salah wake up for the prayer. This is how the Prophet ﷺ mentioned it. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَرَحِمَ imra'atan." And the same thing for the woman. She wakes up her husband to pray. She sprinkles water in his face. And the Prophet ﷺ said another hadith in Ibn Hibban that the husband and the wife that pray Qiyamul Layl together will be written with Allah as Adhakirin Allah Kathiran wa Dhakirat. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently from the men and from the women. What does this show you? Ego spoils a relationship with Allah and it spoils the relationship between people. Remove your nafs from the equation and redirect your focus as a couple towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when you sit and talk to each other, you will observe ihsan with one another. You'll observe excellence with one another and you'll try to outdo each other, not in making a point, but in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the other. And for those who have not yet gotten married, you will not find anyone, anyone, that will be better for you than a person of taqwa and khuluq, and that's better for you in your world as well as your akhirah, as well as your hereafter. And you know what? If you have to wait for that and wait, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has someone in store for you. Do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, I heard something very beautiful. I remember Imam al-Shanqiti rahimahullah, and wallahi, this, this really, really, really made me cry when he talked about Asiya, and he talked about Maryam. He said, as for those people that don't find a righteous spouse in this world, 
Allah has saved them for himself. Allah has saved them for himself. The reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for those of us who, who have any relationships of any sort with parents, spouses, children, and with our brothers and sisters, please Allah through that other person. Do not try to please yourself through that other person. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the quality of ihsan, of excellence with him and with our spouses and with our parents and with our children and with everyone in our lives. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah ibrakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbir. Takbir. Jazakumullah, Imam Umar, for this uh, beautiful presentation. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our families together, keep our uh, children protected, and inshallah make us uh, from the people of Jannah and join us all together, inshallah, on the Day of Judgment. Jazakumullah uh, khair. Thank you very much for uh, uh, really attending uh, very uh, attentively. Uh, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you and you reward your families. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salat al-Asr will be at uh, 3.45. Salat al-Asr will be at 3.45 for those uh, who are muqeem, inshallah.
Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. 